Buckeyes are celebrating their final home game at Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes hosting the Hoosiers of Indiana. For Ohio State, a chance to add on to a school record-tying winning streak. A chance to clinch a spot in the Big Ten Championship game and those BCS standings so important at this point of the year. Ohio State trying to hold off Baylor and find a way to move into the top two. And hi, everybody. Welcome inside the booth. Dave Fleming along with Chris Spielman and Chris for Ohio State. The reality of the, this BCS system is they've got to keep winning. They're trying to set a school record with their 23rd straight win here today. Clinch a spot in that championship game, but they also have to win with some style. Well, they do. they got to dominate their opponent to get the attention of voters. And this is an opponent they should dominate, at least on paper. And one way to do that is have a dominant running game. You can do that with Braxton Miller, went for 184. That guy, Carlos Hyde. To me, he's the biggest impact player this offense has had this year. One reason he has finishing speed. Last year, 240. He did not. This year, 230. He does. The other reason why they're big plays in a running game is because of the perimeter blocking or blocking down field by wide receivers. We're going to see Hireman, number 86, Fields, number 80, then Evan Spencer with a knockout, creating the lane. And this is what I'm talking about. Carlos Hyde last year, long run of 29 yards. This year, at least two over 50. So those numbers a little ugly for Indiana on the defensive side of things, and it feels like a mismatch here today when Ohio State has the football. For Indiana, though, aside from last week, their head coach told us, well, we just out and out laid an egg against Wisconsin. Otherwise, though, their offensive side of the ball has been impressive. Well, they're second in scoring and in total offense behind Ohio State. And you look at it last week, conditions much like this. Sutfeld, Nate Sutfeld, the quarterback, did not wear a glove last week. This week, he's wearing a glove. Let's see if that glove will help him improve on a 9-for-22 performance. Yeah, the Hoosiers are going to have to move the ball through the air. That has become the identity of this offense. It's a good Indiana offense. You figure they'll have to put up a lot of points here today if they're going to match up with the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's cold. It's overcast. We had some flurries during the pregame. Weather is going to be a factor. For more on that, let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team down on the field, Shannon Spake. Shannon? Well, Dave, it is beautiful down here right now. About 30 minutes ago, it was like a blizzard. The wind moved in. It was snowing sideways. I saw offensive coordinator for Ohio State, Tom Herman, down here. He picked up a piece of paper. He held it up, and he watched the way that the wind took it. I walked up to him. He told me it's a lot worse than he expected, the crosswind. And he told me if it continued, he would not make the same mistake he made last weekend, which was trying to establish a passing game with the crosswind. The run game will be a factor if the wind continues for Ohio State. Now, on the other side of the ball, Indiana, they're taking a different approach. Offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell told me they are who they are. Despite the, rain, the wind or the snow, they're going to stick with what they know. All right, Shannon, thanks. And indeed, you saw that picture there. The weather has improved in the last few minutes, Chris, and that, I think, helps Indiana in some ways, a team that needs to be able to throw the ball to move it on offense. Well, yeah, they need to be able to get the ball down the field. They had success against Ohio State last year, and it could help them on defense, especially when Ohio State's offense is going into the win. What I mean by that, Dave, you've got to be able to blitz. They have young guys on defense. When you blitz, you take away their thought process. You just turn them loose and let them go. And it's a lot more difficult for the offense to complete balls down the field deep because of the wind. So I look for Indiana's defense to come out and get after Ohio State and hit those gaps with blitzing backers. So the Hoosiers are going to kick off deep. We've got a great crowd gathered, as always. And that class of 19 accomplished seniors honored before the game. Chris, you went through it here at this stadium. Some butterflies, some nerves for that group of 19. Well, absolutely. And you want to go out a winner. One thing I wasn't able to do. Well, the Buckeyes hoping that they will get the win here. Dontre Wilson, you see number one, back deep to receive. Very talented, true freshman, dynamic playmaker on offense. And the kick return man, Mitch Ewald, will kick it deep for the, Buc the uh, Hoosiers to the Buckeyes as we are underway. And Wilson will take it from around the five-yard line and picks his way forward across the 25 and tackled there. The Buckeyes offense now will come out on the field. And their quarterback, of course, the junior, Braxton Miller, who has had so much success in his Ohio State career, better than 7,000 career total yards, second most in school history, his record as a starter, 24 and 6, 20 straight wins for Braxton Miller under center with Ohio State. Yeah, last week he slumped a little bit by his own admission, wasn't as sharp as he likes to be as far as being efficient throwing the football, 45% completion rate last week. 
Well, they're going to pitch it to Wilson coming to the left, and he'll cut it upfield on the first play of the game and get four yards for Ohio State. Let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We'll start out with Carlos Hyde, the big bruising back on his way to 1,000 yards with 53 today. The speedster, Dontre Wilson, and on defense, keep your eye on number two, Ryan Shazier. He will be all over the field. Hyde alongside Miller and Carlos Hyde gets his first carry of the game and she gets just two maybe three yards Ryan Phyllis with the tackle sets up an early third down for this powerful Ohio State offense well when you look at what they can do they have so many weapons at their disposal and one of the things that coach Herman talked about was getting Dontre Wilson number one involved now that just doesn't mean running football but you'll see him line up in the slot and get him in matchups one-on-one -on -one versus a linebacker like they have right now. Hyde was almost in a pistol formation now alongside Miller on third and three. And Miller is going to run it himself. Miller breaking tackles into the open field. Makes another man miss. Braxton Miller still going inside the 30 and finally shoved out of bounds at about the 23-yard line by the safety, Mark Murphy. Well, you have to be able to discern when number 34 sets inside. That's either screen or draw. The linebackers bail because they think it's pass. And what you have is Braxton Miller. A lot of people were saying, well, why is Kenny Guyton been? Kenny Guyton was so good. Should he be playing for Braxton Miller? And the answer is no because of this reason. He's so explosive running the football and so dynamic. Might have been a face mask in there that the officials didn't see. Miller kept running anyway 41 yards and first down for the Buckeyes Carlos Hyde who's just had a huge year and especially in the last few weeks Hyde tackled by the safety Murphy once again but a nice gain on first down it, when you say tackle by safety once again that's bad and the reason is Carlos Hyde is getting to that second level to the safeties without even being touched or having to slow down to get to that second level. I think that's sort of what you were talking about very early, Chris. The, the Hoosiers defense has to find a way to force the issue up front. Second and a long two here for Ohio State. Hyde will cut back, bounces it to the outside. Carlos Hyde, end zone, touchdown. touchdown of the season Carlos Hyde who has just emerged as one of the very best running backs in the country this season for Ohio State he and Braxton Miller on the ground for that drive Ohio State made it look easy and the place kicker Drew Basil went through the senior day ceremonies could be a difficult day to kick with the wind that's swirling in Ohio Stadium and that point after attempt is good 16 yards Carlos Hyde and Ohio State has the lead well you run one play once you run it again this time he not only got to the safeties but he got to the end zone Excellent. Well, the kick return man Stephen Houston the tailback for the Hoosiers of Indiana and he gets swarmed under there is a flag down on the field during the return Eight Sudbell will come on the field as the quarterback. One of two we'll see for the Hoosiers in this game today. He was a very highly regarded player in high school and came from California to Bloomington. 19 touchdown passes. And he's been a productive quarterback. Trey Roberson will also play at that position for Indiana. Inside their own 10, they start with the ball on the ground, and it's D'Angelo Roberts. The Hoosiers thought he was the one guy on offense who played really well last week. Yeah, they loved how physical he was. Had something like 20 knockdowns, either blocking or running people over. Loved young man getting an opportunity to make an impact with the loss of Tevin Coleman, the fine Indiana running back who's not playing today with an ankle injury. Now, Coleman, the sophomore, has put up big numbers. He will not play. Houston, the senior, will play, but Roberts got the start. Swing pass, Shane Wynn with the catch and got to the edge to get the first down. So Indiana with its first first down of the game. Well, Bolster does a good job of sealing number one, Roby, the corner. Roby's job is to force that ball back inside. He let Bolster, the big six foot six tight end, hook him inside. And number 83, the tight end for the Hoosiers. We got two good tight ends in this game, one on each side, big parts of these offenses. That's a comeback in college football, Dave. I think a tight end puts so much pressure on safeties and linebackers, you have to account for them. 
which leads more space for the wide receivers to do their work. Yeah, we see it at college. We see it in the NFL. Tight ends have become huge again. A handoff after the fake fly sweep, and just not a lot of room there. Ryan Shazier, who's been a standout on defense from the linebacker spot, made the tackle. He's really improved, though. He had a big year last year, but his biggest improvement has come with that exact play, tackling and wrapping up at the point. He's wearing number two again this week. The senior, one of the leaders, Christian Bryant, who many weeks ago broke his ankle and is not going to play for the rest of the regular season. And sort of in honor of his teammate, he's wearing that number two. So Sudfeld throws middle. There's the tight end bolster for a nice game. Tackled just short of the first down by the cornerback, Bradley Roby. Now that's efficient offense. Bolster is the hot route. Ohio State brought a blitz. He went to the open area where the blitz was vacated, sat down, Sudfeld found him. The quick snap. But no room there, and Shazier again in on the tackle of Roberts in the backfield for a loss. It'll be fourth down. Well, there's speculation, talk around town, as you see Shazier reading and diagnosing the play, that this may be his last football game as an Ohio State Buckeye. And he's instinctive, tough, good pass rusher, good pass defender, all-around linebacker. He and Chris Borland. Shane Bull, a lot of great linebackers in the Big Ten this year. Yeah, there are several high-profile juniors on this Ohio State team that did not go through the senior ceremonies, but it could be their final games, and he's one of them. Eric Toth, the punter, bounces one, and Jordan Hall is going to pick it up off the bounce and start to make the return. Hall out to close to the 45-yard line. It'll be excellent field position for the Buckeyes when we come back to Columbus. Ohio State out to the early 7-0 lead. Great scene of the Buckeyes arriving today at Ohio Stadium. Also, a pretty good shot to show you how much the weather is changing, and it has changed again. Man, it's yeah. cold, and the wind is blowing. And the fans cheer louder. Big Ten football. Braxton Miller, first down. Carlos High sort of powers his way forward. Wasn't a whole lot of room there, but he made three or four yards out of it. Well, and you, you got to think that Tom Herman struggled throwing the ball in the wind calling plays and pass plays that weren't very effective against Illinois and you have a powerful running game got a feeling he's going to hang his hat on that right now Ohio State they can do some quick tempo stuff they'll get into the line now Miller will look to the sideline and get an adjustment we talk about Indiana's tempo on offense but the Buckeyes can play quickly Gives it to Hyde. More straight ahead running. And the tackle by the true freshman T.J. Simmons. Indiana does have some young players that are showing some signs, Chris, of development on the defensive and, side. And they are. And you have growing pains with these young players. And the biggest factor to me, there's a couple factors, but the biggest one is that they'll play well for three plays, four plays, and they'll have a huge breakdown of gap integrity. And basically what that means is oftentimes when there's a big run and hits, it's because two guys are in one gap. And one guy, one gap. Not two guys, one gap. That's the rule. Third and three. Ohio State has kept everything on the ground. This time Miller trying to carry it himself. Gets to the edge. Gets the first down and more. Into Indiana territory. Murphy again from the secondary has to make the tackle 12 yard gain. Well, let's call up the UC, USC Trojans of the 70s and do a little student body. Carlos Hyde doing a good job of blocking downfield. Again, Evan Spencer, number six, kicking out the corner to create extra yardage for the always dangerous Braxton Miller. Such a big part of this Ohio State offense, and their line is a big part of it, too. Four seniors out of the five up front. Maybe the best offensive line in college football. Hyde in a, almost a pistol formation. Miller for the first time looking to throw downfield and off the fingertips. Incomplete. Nick Vanette, the tight end, was the intended target there. Let's go. Oh, Arizona with the early lead. Ohio State has a lead here. Miller, the keeper, straight up the middle. Braxton Miller with the speed to the outside. Touchdown. And the somersault at the end. Right here you talk about two guys in one gap. That's where they had it. 
And we'll take a look at that when we get a chance here. Basil with the extra point. Up and good. 37 yards. Braxton Miller already 90 yards on the ground. The Ohio State quarterback. And the Buckeyes offense rolling early. Just a few minutes into this one. And the third-ranked team of the country with the 14-0 lead. The Buckeyes, with that last touchdown, have now set a single-season record for points scored. And Chris, they have another full regular season game after this one, plus a potential Big Ten, 12, Big Ten championship game, plus whatever bowl game they end up in. So I think the points record is going to be obliterated by the end. Shane Wynn bringing it back for the Hoosiers. And not a bad return across the 25, close to the 30. Let's go back and take another look at that last touchdown. Well, the problem of the Indiana's defense all year, whether it's mental or physical, they have two guys in one gap. Freeze right there. You see two guys, almost three guys in one gap, which creates the big running lane for Braxton Miller. And again, this is what he can do better than any other quarterback in the country. Out in open space, he has the speed and the moves to finish and score touchdowns with his feet. Sudfeld, once again, the quarterback for the Hoosiers. Roberts, the tailback. Second time Indiana has the ball. Sudfeld, the quick hitter complete to Cody Latimer for a short game through the air. Bradley Roby declared himself eligible for the NFL draft a better job of tackling one place where he's been a little inconsistent this year is on his tackling right there he did a good job of wrapping up and finishing yeah, he came into the season with expectations really being the best cover corner in the game the handoff and a nice game for Roberts Indiana first down Noah Spence made the tackle and this is where Indiana can get into some tempo they need first downs to start using that offense effectively. No room for Roberts. Ryan Shazier having a heck of a first quarter. It's, it's easy to have a heck of a first quarter when nobody blocks you. And he, Ryan just steps up into the hole without a hat on him, and he's able to square up and make the solid hit. So for a linebacker, when nobody blocks <laughs> yeah, you, that's a fun thing. That's, huh? that's the best part of it. I can't, that's happened three times to Ryan so far. Sudfeld. Will fake the handoff, throw middle, and a nice catch by Latimer. He's got excellent hands. Well, the big 6'3 junior from Dayton, Ohio. Didn't start playing football till his junior year in high school. Is only getting better. I really like him. Just a couple minutes plus left in the first quarter from Ohio Stadium. Handoff. It's Roberts. And the run defense has been stout in the early going for the Buckeyes. Joshua Perry, who was out last week in to be the first guy on the tackle they really missed him he's getting better the more reps he gets he's improved a lot from the beginning of the season to this game Sudfeld looking to pass quick release and he's got the pass complete Roby with the coverage and he will shove Wilson out of bounds short of a first down well, they're going to go out there and test Bradley Roby. Now, he's playing off a little bit in the zone, so you're running hitches in front. Now, is he going to stay patient and play his technique, or is he going to get antsy and jump? They might be setting him up for a little hitch and go, something to keep your eye on as we move forward in this ball game. They yeah, have been going after his side so far. Third and three. And he figured it could well be four down territory for the Hoosiers now. Sudfeld into the flat. Wynn makes the first man miss and the second and gets very close to the first down. Shane Wynn, nice move. Finally, Shazier came over and got him to the ground. And I think they did spot him just short. It's fourth and a yard or so, and you'd have to think that Indiana's going to go for it. Yeah, they, they're not going to get back in this game with field goals. They need touchdowns. This is the right call by Kevin Wilson. Plenty of time on the play clock as Wilson gives some instructions to his quarterback. And it gets louder here in Columbus. Play clock now down to six. On fourth down. And the play was busted and the quarterback Sudfeld found a way to dive forward and get the first down. That was pretty well done. Well, this was a non-designed quarterback follow. You can see right there that he did not risk handing the ball off to Roberts, kept it himself for the first. Pretty good heads-up play by Sudfeld. Another pass out onto that 
side of the field. This time the defense with Roby there. The pass was a little high. Wilson couldn't catch it. Still nine seconds left in quarter number one. 14 nothing Ohio State. Roberts out and Houston into the backfield with Sudfeld. That was the first incomplete pass for the Hoosiers. Sudfeld throws and almost a circus catch. It was high. Nick Stoner, the junior, went up and tried to snag that high pass, but it's incomplete. Well, this is where you can get a wide receiver hurt if you're throwing high across the middle and a good angle by C.J. Barnett. Does a good job of pulling off where you see he could have launched himself, but he had the self-control to back off and not put the layout hit on Stoner. Yeah, maybe a good example right there of the new rules starting to impact the way defensive players play. That's a perfect example. He laid off of him. Smart play by the senior, C.J. Barnett. Could be the final play of the quarter. Sudfeld on third down. Throws middle and threw it behind his target. Cody Latimer was open and not a good pass. Incomplete fourth down when we come back to Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes who have just dominated in the first quarter. And they did so again here today. 83 nothing in the last four games in quarter number one. Carlos Hyde and company on the ground. Especially impressive. Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes with the two touchdown lead. Back here in Columbus, Ohio, Ohio State leading Indiana 14 nothing as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships from Ohio Stadium. And at the senior day ceremonies before the game, the students are out despite the cold, blustery weather. Not that we're surprised by that. On fourth down, Mitch Ewald's going to attempt a field goal for Indiana to try to put the Hoosiers on the board. This is the side of the field, the south side, where it should be a little easier to attempt to kick. This one will be a 42 yards. Ewald has not missed a kick all year. This one is up, and it is no good. Well, that's his first miss of the season, and I think the wind impacted that one. Yeah, you throw the jigs on him, Dave. I'm not taking the blame. <laughs> Normally, a very stout kicker, plenty of distance. Hit it square on the upright. Stuck it back. Again, if you're Indiana, I mean, you're creating a turnover. You have a chance to put points on the board. You have a receiver open for a first down. Those are self-inflicted wounds. Ohio State does not need any help. They're a good enough football team. The Hoosiers need to take advantage of these opportunities when they get them. Yeah, that's a disappointing sequence all the way around the open receiver, the missed kick, as you say. Now Ohio State gets the ball back. Carlos Hyde squirts through the line. More powerful running from the senior. Hyde tackled by the true freshman Marcus Oliver. You know, I think that's what he does best. It's the hidden yards. You think about it, he's had one carry for minus yardage this year. All the carries that he's had, he's had only one where he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. But he takes a two-yard gain, and you look up, and it's a four-yard gain or a five-yard gain. That's the strength that he brings to this offense, and it keeps the offense on schedule. Miller was alone in the backfield. Wilson joined him. Braxton Miller, the quick hitter out of the right side, and Philly Brown bringing it all the way back to the left. Can he get to the edge? No. A lot of running for no gain, even with the tackle. Well, he did a good job of getting back to the line of scrimmage and a uh, better job defensively of Indiana. Rallying to the football, hustling. And what you lack in talent, you make up for an effort. And right now, Indiana's showing good effort on their defensive football team. And it's kind of to your point. They'll they'll make some nice plays on defense and then everything just breaks down all at once the big plays have just crushed Indiana Third down and ten my guys have converted all their third down chances so far Miller Throws short left and Hyde has a go off his hands incomplete and I think the Hoosiers gonna force a punt here Well, that's a win and Kevin Wilson talks about this game as a tennis match about holding serve they held serve when they 
when they got the turnover, they held serve with a three and out. Now they have to get something going on their offensive side of the ball, which they're capable of doing. All they have to do is when there's a play to be made, they have to execute it and make it, which they have not done in the first quarter. Shane Wynn back to receive. Big play maker in special teams for Indiana. Cameron Johnston, the true freshman. He is 21 years old, though, native of Australia, who's just done a heck of a job punting. That's a line drive kick. Win fair catch signal. And inside the 20, the Hoosiers will take over when we come back to Columbus, third-ranked team in the country, Ohio State, leading 14-0. About this for football weather. It is cold. It is snowing here at Ohio Stadium where the Buckeyes are up 14 points over Indiana. Now, Indiana's head coach Kevin Wilson told us this week that coming off the loss last week to Wisconsin, he did not know how his team would respond. He didn't know how they would come out and play early on, flat or with energy. On this sideline right now, guys, they are pretty calm despite the score. They're just cold, but they're going to keep pounding the ball and keep fighting. Well, he said they had their best week of preparation in practice on Wednesday in a month. Ohio State was trying to make a little adjustment formation-wise on defense. Now a throw over the top, and it's incomplete. Intended for the tight end bolster, and the talented young sophomore Noah Spence was there in coverage. Well, if you're not going to sack him, you're going to hit him. Right that time, Adolphus Washington, number 92, was able to bury Sudfeld, who's a tough kid, threw a catchable ball under duress. Again, a chance to make a play. Pretty impressive, too. Noah Spence, who we know more as a pass rusher, frontline defender, that time in coverage. They'll hand it off to Houston, and there hadn't been a lot of room in the running game for the Hoosiers. Sophomore Adolphus Washington made the tackle. So third and nine coming up. State chooses to play coverage or bring more than four. Sudfeld, still time on that play clock. They bring four with a little different rush and a nice play and pass defense. Deron Grant knocks the pass down, incomplete. It's fourth down. Well, first of all, you like the body control of number 12, Grant. There comes the blitzer bringing a pressure, a zone pressure off the corner. And you see Grant having the discipline to keep his left hand off the back, reaching around with that far hand, swatting the ball away. And Toth another punt, and it's blocked. Scooped up by the Buckeyes, and somehow the punter makes the tackle to save the touchdown, but the block by Roby and Ohio State special teams come up with a big play. Well, if you want to make an impact, be an NFL player, you got to be able to show up on special teams. Here's his audition. Watch the angle that he takes. He does not go to the punter. He goes to the kick point. See those hands? Those hands aren't up in the air trying to swat it. He takes it right off the foot. They're able to pick it up. It's Tanner. Does a good job of not falling on it. Trusting his athletic ability to scoop and score, although he got tackled. Excellent execution by Roby of taking it off the foot and staying away from the punter and going right to the kick point. Well, I'm impressed with the tackle by the punter. It may not matter, though, with this Indiana defense now pinned deep. It's first and goal. Carlos Hyde picking his way forward. The defense for the Hoosiers was there. Stop after a gain of two. Fourteen nothing Buckeyes and as we've talked about the style points winning big against an overmatched opponent very important here down the stretch Braxton Miller you see the quarterback on the outside and Kenny Guyton the senior on his senior day there's a buzz in Ohio Stadium noticing Guyton is in he's going to run it and pitch it back to Miller Miller looking to throw and now he'll run Signal touchdown, the leap from Braxton Miller from five yards out. Did he get there? Yes. Yes, he did. Remember, he doesn't have to be down. The ball just has to cross the plane. And Urban Meyer and Tom Herman are drawing him up in the dirt. 
You run down to the fire hydrant, take a left, I'll pitch it to you, and you go by the ice cream truck, and we'll score. That was that play. That was a little backyard football. Basil with the point after, and I got the senior Kenny Guyton involved, who's so popular here in Columbus. Extra point up and good. It's 21 0 Ohio State. It all started with that block punt, Chris. The special teams gave them first and goal. Well, if you want to compete for Big Ten championships or national championships, you got to be solid in all three phrases offense, defense, special teams. If I'm not going to throw it, I'll go ahead and dive in. Count to six. Uh, one, just about an hour from here in Columbus. Buckeyes fans watching their team roar out to a 21 nothing lead. And Ohio State will kick it back to the Hoosiers here with the wind blowing through Ohio Stadium. And the senior place kicker, Drew Bezos, has done a good job for Ohio State. Third year as the kicker. He does everything the field goals the kickoffs Shane Wynn deep to receive for Indiana and in the wind a very short kick Wynn comes up and takes it and Wynn squirts through that hole then gets hit hard across the 25 out to the 28 yard line well as we sort of speculated Trey Roberson in a quarterback and right away an impressive play up the middle Corey Brown the safety made a tackle that saved more yardage but Roberson in for Sudfeld and that was nicely done. Yeah that's kind of we predicted that because there was no rhythm Trey Roberson can run the option the read option and regular option and also he's a good thrower of the ball. Don't be deceived. He can he can sling it. Yeah, and this isn't just a pure benching because Roberson plays every game for the Hoosiers. They get him in, they get him snaps, and sometimes plays just as much as Sudfeld. It's a true two quarterback system. He keeps it left side. Shazier though too fast, tracked him down from behind. You now we talked to Kevin Wilson about Trey, and last year had a tough injury, and uh, not sure he's quite over that, but I think he's getting better the more hits that he takes and. By next year, he I think Kevin would almost like one guy to step up and take that job. Did you get that feeling from him? Yesterday? I did. Yeah, that was interesting too. Robertson tries to drill one in there and it was knocked down incomplete. Shazier is just all over the place. I think he got a hand on that one. But back to your point about the two quarterback system, I I, I did get the sense, and now here we go. Sudfeld for third and seven comes on the field, Roberson off. Yeah, see, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, if you're gonna play, you're gonna ride him riding. You can make the throws. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, th I think it hurts their offense as many points as they've put up at times. Now three plus minutes of the first half. Sudfeld over the middle. Nice throw and catch. It's Hughes for the first down across the 40 out to the 43. But you know what? He comes in and makes a throw <laughs> off the bench and throws a dart. Hughes does a good job of sitting down in that zone coverage finding the open hole and I love the ball was released to a spot not to a man so he stays in he's going deep right sideline Hughes jumps up and catches it into Ohio State territory close to the 30 Grant with the coverage but Hughes with that technique you were talking about went up and snatched the ball out of the air yeah, and purposely thrown behind and Duran Grant has to have better awareness of the football better eyes on the receiver and just better. Sudfeld throws again intended for Hughes and they hit right as the ball got there incomplete and Hughes is shaken up and right there was you know not adjusting quick enough on the previous play right here watch the break on the football by number 12 Durant Grant feet underneath stick it and go and close he does a good job of getting that right arm in there and keeping the left arm off the back of the jersey get there early Hughes had to come off the field so Indiana on second and ten. Sudfeld after that third down throw now under center that doesn't happen very often and you see what Michael Bennett again in the backfield tackles Houston for a loss again his quickness is what sets him apart from most defensive linemen they line him up as a nose and he's supposed to get help the center is supposed to Rarick is supposed to get hope from the guard the guard does not get there because the speed of Bennett on his get off Heats into the A-gap and is able to go into the backfield on touch for TFL. Tackle for loss. Four yards on the loss. Third and 14 for the Hoosiers. Sudfeld. 
pressure, throws a little screen type play, and a missed tackle, but not a second missed tackle. Across the original line of scrimmage down to the 26th, Joshua Perry finally brought the receiver down. It's fourth down, fourth and about six, and the Hoosiers are going for it. If you're Ohio State, you have to play man-to-man -man in this situation. You cannot play zone. They find the zones, and they'll hit you for the first. And they got to the line quickly. Now we'll make an adjustment to the call. And it's loud, so he's got to go along the line and make that change. The quarterback in the pocket, pressured, and can't get away. Ohio State sacks him, and the Buckeyes will take over. Bosa and Bennett and others were in on the sack. Well, it starts with coverage downfield. It's a little bit of a matchup zone. They're in a too deep look, but they're jumping wide receivers, and that's a nice job of Joshua Perry coming off his guy, picking up the inside underneath cutter. Then you have Michael Bennett, who has great quickness off the football, beating his man again with an inside move swim and just keeping his feet active and relentless to get the sack with the assist from Joey Bosa. I think the two standouts on defense for the Buckeyes in this first half have been Shazier and Bennett. No argument here. High big run up the middle. And powers his way for a first down. Another Obviously, that's a very big game in the Big Ten. Braxton Miller back to action here into Indiana territory. Final minute of the first half. Buckeyes trying to add to a 21 nothing lead. He even might have saved a touchdown. Well, when you got a chance to make a play, not only on offense, but for the Hoosier defense, they had Braxton Miller lined up. And you have a missed tackle, and Braxton Miller gets 20 extra yards. You miss him, and he's going to make you pay. Under a minute to go, the play fake. Miller looking deep middle. He's got his man caught. Inside the 10, the tight end, Jeff Hireman. First and goal, Buckeyes. The growth and improvement of Braxton Miller from this year to last year, keeping his eyes downfield, not panicking when there's pressure, sliding his feet, and finding the open receiver to big six foot six target, Jeff Hireman. Well, that's what they talk about when they say be a quarterback. The handoff high, end zone touchdown. That was fast and furious. Five yards, Carlos Hyde has another touchdown run, his second of this first half. And it's 27-0 Buckeyes with the extra point coming. Basil attempt the point after here. The snap was high. Good hold. Basil gets the kick up and through. Kenny Guyton did a nice job there. So the Hoosiers head to the locker room. So do the Buckeyes. After a very nice first half, let's send it down to Shannon Spake with the Buckeyes head coach. Coach, you told us yesterday that this was going to be a tough matchup for your defense. How have you been able to shut Indiana out in this first half? We've worked. Uh, I, I got to give our coaches credit. I'm obviously, more more credit to our players. We worked real hard on pass defense, and this is a very good throwing team. So we just it's going to be. We got to play 30 more minutes. Right. Last week you guys had a little bit of a lull. What will be different this week? Well, there, there's a, this is a very invested team, and when you say a lull, you're still playing good football, offensive football team. So we need the the offense. The best defense is good offense too. Thanks, coach. Thanks. All right, thanks to Coach Meyer and to Shannon. 17 0. Well, the O sort of stands in every instance. Ohio State 28 0. Coming up, stay tuned. A complete halftime report right after these messages. Fleming, Chris Spielman up here in the booth at Ohio Stadium. And Chris, look, Ohio State's up 28 0. And we expected this to be a lopsided game if Ohio State played the way they have for, for most of this season. The question now is, can they keep it going? Because in the BCS era for Ohio State, it's important to keep it going. We all know the rules that we're playing under. Ohio State needs quote-unquote style points. Last week, they were up 28-0. They allowed Illinois back in the ball game. Right now, they got to come out. A message in the locker room had to be, guys, we got to go drive the stake. We got to go try to put 100 on. That's what they have to do. I mean, that's the rules that we're all under. I don't like them. I don't think coaches like it. But that's what you're playing under. And basically, we know, we, we talked to Brad Edwards, our ESPN BCS expert, about it yesterday. Basically, we know the computers are going to stay almost exactly as they are from now through the end of the season for Ohio State, for Baylor. As the kick return for Indiana. 
the Hoosiers will have the ball at the start of the second half and we'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and how we got to 28 nothing Buckeyes. Yeah, it's on the ground and right here Braxton Miller and I would say one noticeable difference. He's running with attitude. Carlos Hyde number 34 always runs with attitude when you have a leader and a playmaker like Ryan Shazier big things will happen for your defense including big hits like that one. Uh, Shazier just had a tremendous first half and what could be his final home game with the Buckeyes. Nate Sudfeld is the quarterback at the start of the second half and out of the pistol the handoff to D'Angelo Roberts another big hit for Ohio State this time Tyvis Powell the redshirt freshman from the secondary but the point we were making about the computers the computers are not going to change much at all if Ohio State wants to make sure they keep themselves ahead of Baylor put themselves in a position to move into the top two spots of the BCS they have got to change some voters minds they have to be impressive enough to where some of those voters change the way they're voting and it's all about the eyeball test and, and letting Illinois back in the game last weekend showed weakness in some of the eyes of voters so first down Indiana moving the ball to start the third quarter win will get another catch get to the edge once again Shut out of bounds by Roby. well that's an automatic and when the defensive backs or the perimeter players on the trip sides are playing off they're going to run that quick screen because it allows the receivers downfield to get in the way or the path of the defenders closing in to make the tackle it's excellent read by the quarterback Sudfeld in a good job of throwing a catchable ball where he's catching in stride to transition from catch to run smoothly. Yeah, when you use that term, really, that's almost like the running game through the air. Just a quick hitter, easy completion. This time they actually keep it on the ground. And Stephen Houston, who has some good production this year, has been quiet in this game. Gets a first down for Indiana. Sudfeld stays in a quarterback, looking to his head coach, Kevin Wilson. Turf has to get a little slick, doesn't it? As, as snow starts to accumulate. Yeah, and that's uh, was the point of Kofi Hughes making a great adjustment with his feet, being a good athlete, playing with his feet underneath him. And a big hit as the ball got there. Incomplete pass. Bradley Roby and both guys sort of got dinged up there. Roby put the hit on. He's slow to get back up. Well, this is an outstanding read by Bradley Roby. He has safety help over top so he can jump the underneath route. It's a perfect read. He comes in and he tries to wrap up. He makes such good contact that he bounces off. Roberts, they will fake it to Roberts and throw. It's incomplete. Sutfeld's misses have mostly been high in this game intended for Latimer. Number 16 out on the corner. Cam Burrows. Pretty solid coverage. Grant not in the ball game. Number 12 for the Buckeyes. So you got a backup corner. Not a bad idea to attack him. A guy who hasn't played a lot of snaps. His third and goal. Remember after the penalty, they're all the way back near the 20 yard line, but they have a couple plays to try to get into the end zone. And a long drive for the Hoosiers at the start of the half. Sudfeld with time. Now on the move, hit from behind. Bosa, shut, were there to drop the quarterback. The continued growth of Joey Bosa, the 6'6 freshman from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Lauderdale, beats around the edge. Relentless pass rusher, shut, doing a good job of containing his lane, and they're able to get the one two punch and shut the door. So to speak on Setfeld. So they're going to try a field goal here in the snow. Mitch Ewald, who attempted one earlier and missed it, his first miss of the year. This one 41 yards. They've cleared a little spot on the turf. Good hold, kick on the way. And that one hits the upright on the other side. That's a first for me. I've never seen two in one game. That's hard to do. And the first half off the right side, this time off the left side. They tried to kick in the snow, and it did not work. Big Ten football here in Columbus. Buckeyes still lead 28-0.
Back in Columbus where the snow is falling. Ohio State on senior day up 28 nothing against the Hoosiers of Indiana getting the ball for the first time now in the second half. Braxton Miller back on the field. Carlos Hyde carry for Carlos Hyde. It'll be second down tonight. Hyde into the open field. Carlos Hyde into Indiana territory with the big game tackle by Murphy. Well we're talking about Baylor. And it's important that we compare them because both teams jockeying for position, Chris, in those BCS standings. Well, absolutely. And again, look at the defense. Eleventh in the whole country. I mean, what an improvement. And did Baylor last year against Texas? Frankly, their defense was putrid. I couldn't think of another word, so I just came up with putrid. But now they're good, and they're athletic, and they play hard, and Phil Bennett's got it going. And they're a complete football team. And I think talk about the, the style points. Miller tried to get through that tackle couldn't do it in the backfield the tackle for the loss by Green so a nice play by Ralph Green for Indiana it's second down but the Bears have nine wins eight of the nine have been by three touchdowns or more and for Ohio State five of their ten wins by three touchdowns or more and really when the other numbers are so similar when strength of schedule the record everything else looks the same those blowout wins the wins where Baylor looks like one of the best teams in the country I think those right now are the difference yeah right now and uh, there's a lot of football to be played and that's why Ohio State has to win next week in the game interesting that the Buckeyes are now throwing the ball a little more Carlos Hyde into Hoosiers territory with the reception they are but they're safe throws not throwing the ball a lot downfield I think there's downfield throws to be had if they want them and you know, they might be a little gun shy after the last series where the interception took place. Ezekiel Elliott, number 15. That's the future of Ohio State running backs right there, the true freshman out of St. Louis. So, kind of what you were talking about. Just so much depth, <laughs> so is. much talent. Elliott's a very talented kid. It's third and three. And they're going to fake the handoff to him. Miller looking to throw. Gets away from the pressure. Stays on balance. Into the open field. Braxton Miller still going. What a run by Miller. First down and more. Well, a great player can make a bad decision, turn it into a good decision with athletic ability. Right here, he could have ran right up the middle, but no, he likes to bounce it outside. And this you can't teach, you can't coach. And I'm telling you, there's a difference in his attitude in running the football. He's running with a point to prove. Running with power. Well, Look that, at that. That fires up the offensive lineman, Dave. It yeah, really that, does. That was a, a really impressive run by Miller. He's got 12 carries already over 150 yards on the ground. And that just makes upcoming defensive coordinators shake because you got Carlos Hyde and Braxton Miller. I mean, they're, they're just so powerful running the ball. The pitch play to Wilson into the open. Dontre Wilson, the freshman. Touchdown, Ohio State. And then you have that. on this Buckeyes team 24 yards to make it 34 nothing they said they were going to get in the ball today yeah I see why explosive 65 yard drive after Indiana did not convert on fourth down the Buckeyes with the extra point coming with Drew Basil is good so it's 35 nothing we saw the power of Braxton Miller and the athleticism and then Chris we saw the speed of the freshman Wilson well Carlos Hyde's a good runner but guess what he can lead block Dontre Wilson speed to the zone well, while we were in our break you got to make sure that everybody can see the goal line with the snow falling not a lot of accumulation, but that counts, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah, I guess. If you're from California, it does. For me, that is a major <laughs> snowstorm. It is kind of cool to see patterns on the field on this turf in Columbus. 35 nothing for the third-ranked team in the BCS standings. As the Buckeyes are going to give the ball back to the Hoosiers, who have moved the ball at times in this game, just have not been able to make anything of it. And they'll use Roby to hold for... Basil with the wind still swirling. Yeah. He's done a nice job considering. 
Outstanding. Again, another veteran player for Ohio State. Kicker, Drew Basil. Houston deep to receive for Indiana. Going side to side instead of straight ahead. And a good special teams play by the Buckeyes. Well, not Sudfeld took a big hit and the ball was knocked away by Roby intended for Nick Stoner and Sudfeld a little slow to get up. Well, he's a tough kid. He's taking some shots all day. He hangs in there. He throws a nice ball as Noah Spence comes in and finishes off and Bradley Roby going up playing the football and not the man trusting his athletic ability and his ability to get up the air to swat it away. So Sudfeld will go to the sideline Trey Roberson in for Indiana. Late stages of quarter number three. Hoosiers down big. Roberts gets the handoff and a tackle right at the line. Washington and Spence bring down Roberts for a loss. He's starting to come on. He had, he had been slowed by injuries. They were expecting big things from Adolphus Washington. And again, one of the luxuries Ohio State has is depth at defensive line. They go about nine deep. Keep fresh bodies in there, putting pressure on that offensive line. And you said it, a guy who came in here to Columbus with a huge expectation, one of the top high school players in the country. Third and ten. That's Wynn who goes in motion. Roberson will screen play to Roberts, who gets a block. Roberts upfield dives forward and he's close, but I think about a half a yard short. Roby with the tackle. And they do spot him short. It's going to be fourth down. Go for it. Why not? Why not? Braxton Miller staying warm. They're not lined up. Ohio State's not lined up. Settle down. Indiana had a chance to snap that ball, Dave. Yeah. You get a first down. You had Ohio State looking around, wondering what's going on. And maybe as the quarterback Roberson gets a little more experience, he'll just kind of take charge there. Instead, he looked to the sideline on fourth and one. He's going to run it, and he's into the open. Roberson to the 30 and dragged down from behind. Roby with the speed to catch him. He was looking for the end zone, couldn't quite get there. Well, this is the difference maker, and this is what Indiana wants to be. When you have that ability to have a guy that can run and throw and burst through the hole and a fine tackler like Ryan Shazier throw a no-hitter because of a bad angle, that's what brings this offense, can make it its most dynamic when they're a two-way threat. A rare misplay by Shazier. So Roberson stays in. He got 35 yards, but I think the Hoosiers, who have had so many problems in this part of the field, they were hoping he would get all the way in. He's going to keep it again. Gets another good block. This time is dragged down. Sort of spun around by the linebacker Perry. I, I think Kevin Wilson wants this. I think he wants his offense into a ball to what Ohio State has in the Braxton Miller and Roberson could be that guy from the pocket nice throw and catch inside the 10 the Hoosiers will have first and goal another catch for Kofi Hughes nice job by Roberson coming off the bench again Cole giving this offense a little bit of rhythm and another threat running the football sixth time they've been in Ohio State territory and they've been down this close a few times and they have nothing to show for it. But Roberson does indeed stay in and Stephen Houston the senior is now in a tailback. Roberson looking for a hole up the middle inside the five gets down to about the three Shazier with the tackle. Third time they run that play. And again, it's the same philosophy. Run it until they stop. Second and goal, Hoosiers. Been a long time by the, their standards on offense since they got into the end zone. Roberson, a little delay, and he drops the ball. Shazier with the hit, it popped right up to him, so it's not a turnover. But it's third and goal. Remember the long run and Shazier missed him? Yep. Well, Ryan Shazier is too good of a football player to miss him twice. This time filling the hole. And again, his improvement has come when he's become a better tackler by hitting with his head up and wrapping his arms and running through his target. 
end of the third quarter in Columbus. It'll be third and goal for the Hoosiers when we come back. Ohio State leads 35 nothing. Back here at Ohio Stadium, Ohio State leading Indiana 35 nothing. Start of the fourth quarter. We continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships. These teams have played many, many times in their football history. 85 times. Not a lot of offense from the Hoosiers over all those years. Only 10 points per game. It's third and goal. Trying to get some points on this play with Roberson, the quarterback. And he's going to keep it again. The cut back, and he can't get there. Down to the two. Does Indiana have another option? Do they have another play they can call? Well, until they stop this one, no. no I like it. I like the call. Now you can either run some sort of play action, misdirection. You're going to bring Cody Latimer, number three. Big six foot three wide receiver, strong hands, matched up one on one with Burroughs, number 16. Possible fade or work a one on one matchup down there. So it's fourth and goal. Hoosiers going for it on fourth down again. Roberson looking end zone. The throw and the pass is incomplete. I think Latimer had a chance to come up with it. Burroughs on the coverage. The Hoosiers get all the way down, and once again, they come up empty. Yeah, and that's the matchup we talked about right there. That's a good matchup, and I think a well-thrown ball behind, and usually a sure-handed Latimer will bring this in. Now, let's take a look at Burroughs' coverage. Yeah, that's that should be a catch. Got to catch it. Burroughs is all over him, but that's a catch that he's more than capable of making. A good throw by Roberson. Low and away. 79-yard drive, and nothing to show for it. Very frustrating for Indiana. When we show those series numbers. They haven't scored a lot of points historically against Ohio State. This is a different Indiana team. Last year they scored 49 against the Buckeyes. A whole different story today. And deep in their own territory, power running from Carlos Hyde on first down. It's just interesting to see. I have Ohio State backed up. And I'm trying to create something on defense. I would have blitzed nine. Just get them up there. They have everybody in the backfield. They have what they have a wide bone formation. They're not going to throw it. Take your chances and blitz. Just all out blitz. You have nothing to lose to try to create something. Fair to say they haven't done as much of that over the course of the game as maybe you anticipated. Uh, it's, they've done less than I would have done, yes. Hyde with another carry. And what a run for the first down, Ohio State. Let's go back to the studio with Robert Flores. All right, guys, here's what's happening on SportsCenter right now, presented by Intel. This from the NBA. Bulls announcing just minutes ago that Derrick Rose is out indefinitely after tearing his meniscus last night in Portland. Surgery is required. This is not the same knee that he tore his ACL in two seasons ago. Good thing for Derrick Rose, you know, meniscus is much easier to come back from than ACL. Carlos Hyde on first down. And the senior tailback with more yards on the ground. Let's take a look at Carlos Hyde's day. Power, senior day. You make a name for yourself. It was 240 last year, 230 this year. I have speed and power. You see him fight, crawl, scratch for every yard. And that's what the difference is. You saw that little change of speed, that burst you got a hold, David? That's what makes him special. Yeah, that was really impressive, actually. Good camera look at the quick acceleration for Hyde, who's got 114 yards and a couple touchdowns. Fine crew. Led by our great producer, Bo Garrett, excellent director, Mike Schwab. We find that stuff. Here's Dontre Wilson. Much different style back than Carlos Hyde, but another big game. Now, here's why I was saying the Indiana can blitz. We can count on one hand. Ohio State is not throwing the ball down the field. Yep. So play your corners off and just start coming. And guess what? It's the fourth quarter. They're up 35 to 0. They're not going to throw it. Get everybody up there and just all out blitz them and try to make something happen, create a turnover. Just to back up your point, nine completions for Braxton Miller, a total of 96 yards. And they have not thrown the ball downfield. Yeah, and about eight of them have been quick uh, slants or screens. Yeah. Miller throws incomplete. So it'll be second down for Ohio State. 
Miller throwing down the middle, and he's got the tight end complete. Jeff Hireman, first down. There's a downfield shot. Uh, Jeff Hireman, big 6'6", 252 pounds, is playing great football. And right there, that's on number four for Indiana. Flo Harden. You have to carry him all the way to the safeties. Understanding the situation in the game, number three receiver becomes Hardman as a linebacker. Run with him down the field and turn it into man to man in the third and 17 situation. Take the pressure off the safeties. So big play in the past game. They went downfield there with Hardman, who's a good kid. We talked to him yesterday and has turned into a really good player. Going deep here and zone caught. Touchdown, Devin Smith. And then he avoided the goalpost at the end. What a throw from Braxton Miller. Well, Devin Smith does a great job of setting this up. It's just a pure post route. Beating the corner inside. They were playing cover four. What that is is the safety's up, playing about nine yards. The corner's role is to be off and inside and protect the post at all costs. He got caught outside. Smith runs the post, literally runs the post and into the post for six. The first teamers are still in there. Basil kicks it up and through after those penalties. And Ohio State has expanded their lead 42 nothing. What a throw by Braxton Miller. He's done it on the ground in the air. Devin Smith with the catch. Miller and the Buckeyes pouring it on the Hoosiers. Dave Fleming, Chris Spielman back here in Columbus, Ohio. All Buckeyes 42 nothing here in the fourth quarter. It's cold. It's a big lead for Ohio State. But Chris, the band doesn't go away. No, they're tough. They play through the cold. About the cold, Dave. Play and play well. That's right. Ohio State, I think well, the point Chris made was a good one. They have not backed off, and part of that is this BCS system having to make their wins as impressive as they can. Win now on the edge, gets to that corner, and then gets hit as he goes out of bounds. That's going to be a penalty at the end of that play. That'll add 15 yards to that return. It was senior day. We've been talking about that a lot. And Kenny Guyton, the popularity here, his introduction. And it could have been the biggest cheer with all the stars on this Buckeyes team and in that senior class. He might have gotten the biggest ovation. Yeah, and his biggest fan is Urban Meyer. And Kenny Guyton deserved that ovation the way he came in and performed when Braxton Miller went down. This team did not miss a beat. In fact, you know, I do a weekly radio show here in town. A lot of folks were asking, should Kenny Guyton be the starter instead of Braxton Miller? And no, he shouldn't be. And the reason being because you don't take the threat of Braxton Miller off the field ever. But I think Kenny has helped Braxton get the most out of his talents and 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 not just that I mean the intangible stuff is really incredible but you also reference when Miller was down Guyton with the, the six touchdown yeah. half and the, the incredible performances last year go back to the Purdue game when Ohio State was trying to preserve their perfect season he came in and sort of saved the day in that one well Kenny Guyton can start at a lot of places but not here because of Braxton Miller. And you see right there, Urban Meyer has a special place in his heart for that young man, Kenny Guy. And he's a leader. That's what Kenny is. Hung on for an extra half second or so with the hug there, I think. Sudfeld in. Roberson was sort of banged up. Sudfeld floats one to the left flat, and it's incomplete. We were talking with Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator of the Buckeyes, and we asked him, so you're going to miss your backup quarterback? And Tom said, basically, what was his line? I'm going to have some cleaners. Yeah, he's, yeah, he means a lot to this football team. So we're, we're kind of hoping that Kenny gets in the game. He was warming up, as Shannon said. It's Tom Herman right there. I'll tell you what, he's going to make a fine head coach one day. He's done a great job of these offensive coordinator and where this offense was and to where it is today. A lot of it's due to that young man, Tom Herman. Yeah, very impressive guy. Third and ten Hoosiers. Sudfeld throws a slant. It's caught, but the good open field tackle well short of the first down. Presumably, Indiana's going to go for it again on fourth down. That was Roundtree with the catch. Joshua Perry, who they missed last week. 
Outstanding player. We're getting better and better right here from Olentangy Liberty High School, Columbus. 6'4. He's long. Covers a lot of ground in pass coverage. This will be the eighth time the Hoosiers have gone for it on fourth down in this game. That's kind of amazing. Sudfeld throws and they get it. Hughes with the catch, the conversion. First down, Indiana. Good read by Sudfeld. Sending D'Angelo Roberts into the flat. One outside, one inside. Right there, Kofi Hughes does a good job of adjusting and spinning out to get the first down. I love the way he catches the ball with his hands. He's had a very nice game. Nine catches, 120 yards for Hughes. Sudfeld steps up in the pocket and a great catch inside the 10 by Shane Wynn. The kid from Cleveland. Cleveland Glenville, they produce a lot of football players. Watch this ability to be able to flip your hips, focus on the football, make the catch. So this is the offense that we expected to see from Indiana. First and goal. How many times can the Hoosiers get down into Ohio State territory and not score? Look at that. And that doesn't even account really for how many times they've been inside the 20 or the 25. Option kind of play and the pitch. But a cut back for Roberts and maybe should have just taken it to the outside. Jay's here there again. Yeah, that might be his 16th tackle of the day. I think I'm pretty close to that. Ryan Shazier, instinctive, tough, smart, can rush a passer, can play pass defense, and makes plays from sideline to sideline. He's a true Buckeye linebacker. Well, you can see why, said by one, you can see why the NFL scouts are getting very excited about him. And he's improved so much this year from last year. He had a great year last year. But just he's great, he's great instincts. That's the key to being a linebacker, vision and instincts, and he has it. I'll see your 16 and raise you two. He's got 18 tackles in this game. That pass was complete for a gain of a yard. And the tight end, Ted Bolster, he's a good player. He's been fairly quiet in this one. Perry with the coverage. Well, and the reason why, we talked to Coach Wilson about that. And you see the tackle numbers for Brian. I love that, the TFLs. A lot of times you can have 20 tackles, but they're seven yards downfield. Within those 18 tackles, are three TFLs and a lot of them at the line of scrimmage. But Bolster is used as a pass protector a lot more this year as opposed to a receiver. Number one of the Big Ten and tackles for loss. Shays here. The little fade pass and it's incomplete again. Latimer got his hands on the ball. Now there was a hit by Burroughs, but Cody Latimer known for his strong hands and he could not come down with it. Well, it's a good job of Burroughs of going up and not quitting on the play, sticking his hand in between the receiver's hands and fighting to the very end and breaking it out of there at the last second. Yep, really good play. It would have been a great catch. He's, he stood out today. Trying to keep Indiana off the board. They have held tight here inside the 10 in this game. Fourth and goal. Roberts leaves the backfield. Sudfeld all alone. That guys bring some pressure. The throw open and caught. Touchdown. Shane Wynn, the first points of the game for the Hoosiers on fourth and goal. Well, the blitz is going to come from Joshua Perry, who I said from Liberty High School. No, he was from Holentangy High School. Gets there, but not in time. And they're able to expose the slant. Sudfeld hit and win. So, the Hoosiers finally, a little something to cheer about. With the extra point coming, Mitch Ewald, who's missed his first two kicks of any kind in this game. First point after attempt, and it's right down the middle. Well, will we see the backup, Mr. Popular, here in Columbus when we come back? I think we will. Great celebration of Ohio State football history inside their facility. There's the clock that ticks down year-round to the game. Next week, the 109th meeting, Ohio State-Michigan rivalry. Dates back all the way to 1897. So, Chris, is that how they refer to yeah. Michigan here on campus? The, the team up north, and if you go to Michigan, Coach Hoke and the folks refer to Ohio State as Ohio, not Ohio State. It's a great robbery, and I, what a privilege it was for me to be a part of that, that series and play four games. And it's an awesome experience. Two great schools, two great traditions. 
going at it. It's, it's, it epitomizes college football in my mind. And next week, noon on ABC, the game, Ohio State, Michigan. And an onside kind of kick that wasn't really well done. Roby falls on it. Ohio State will get the ball. Well, a big ovation, not just from the fans, but the teammates. Look how excited everybody is. Kenny Guyton gets a chance to get in his final home game at Ohio Stadium. The senior fifth-year player from Houston, Texas, the backup quarterback. At 5.58 to go, he'll hand off to Carlos Hyde, the top-line tailback who's still in. And here's a quick glimpse at what he did when he came out here. Yeah, what a... What an experience for all these seniors, not only Kenny and who that smiling away playing football. Yeah. A kid who loves being a Buckeye, and that was not always necessarily the case. I think Kenny was sort of at one point thinking about maybe trying to find another program where he'd get some more playing time, and he decided to stick it out, and he says it was the best decision he ever made. Yeah, it wasn't uh, Urban Meyer wasn't the biggest fan of Kenny Guyton, and Kenny grew and matured and very valuable. Asset for this football team. He's running the ball and Guyton with a nifty move. The ball may have come out at the end of that play. Jake Mahalik was in there on defense for the Hoosiers. We'll see who has it. I don't know if they signaled him, signaled him down. They're not acting like it. And they're still having a hard time picking everybody out of that pile. Good to see some fight from the Hoosiers in there. Well, it's Indiana yeah. ball. Let's see if we can tell ourselves with the replay whether the ball came out. That ball is definitely out. A good effort hustle play by number 55. Jake Mahalik. Jake Mahalik coming in from the defensive tackle, running downfield, stripping that football. Well, interesting part of this game, Chris, is that it's 42-7 Buckeyes. It hasn't mattered, and Guyton's not happy about that a chance to get in the game in front of the, the fans. But Ohio State has committed all three turnovers in this game. Up the middle run out into the open. Steven Houston, little stutter step at the end. A nice gain inside the 30, down close to the 25. Our Pacific Life game summary from Columbus, Ohio. 14 tackles, four tackles for loss, a couple of the line of scrimmage. Good running game for Ohio State, 301 rushing yards. Good thing if you're a Hoosier fan, you're looking at your Hoosiers, they're showing no quit. Keep coming after Ohio State. And the 19 tackle performance from Chazier has been a big part of this one. Sudfeld goes into a slide to avoid a hit. Chase Ferris, one of those backup players for the Buckeyes, getting a chance to get in the game. Indiana has moved the ball, and, and for a game that's this lopsided, Hoosiers have won the turnover battle three to nothing. The total yardage, 461 for Ohio State, 419 for Indiana. Yeah, they've been able to throw the, throw the ball, but not really able to capitalize in the red zone. The red zone offense has been terrible. Houston with the catch, spun around, and he gets close. Burroughs with another play with the tackle. I think he got the first down. He did. Well, we were talking about those style points. Yeah. Some of those may disappear here in the well, final minutes of this people game. People that did not watch the game and look at the final score and say, oh, Ohio State only beat Indiana 42 to 14 when, you know, if you don't watch the game, you don't understand how much Ohio State has dominated this game. It's a pistol, but Houston leaves the backfield. Sudfeld throws middle, and his receiver broke the other way. Bolser. Went in, the throw went out. Incomplete second and ten. Okay, we talked about our Pacific Life game summary and a little more complete look at how this game is unfolding. That's sort of what you're talking about. Indiana, 39 points a game. They have only seven so far. The Ohio State defense. There were a lot of questions about that defense after last week. I think they played extremely well. Yeah, and they're getting better. And the thing they have to do is continue on being consistent. They have athletes. They get asked all the time, can they match up with Florida State and Alabama? Yes, they can. And number two is a big reason why. Wow. Has he had a big game or what? Well, this is Luke Fickle. 
And why is it Luke? Because you take your best player, you move him around, and you do different things to get him involved. There's a missed assignment, and Ryan Shazier, when he has a clean shot, does not miss. There's Luke Fickle, another guy who I think will be a great head coach, already has head coaching experience. Did a wonderful job when he replaced Coach Trussell for that one year. Under difficult circumstances, the guys never quit. He held them together. He has a future as a head coach, and I think sooner rather than later. Yeah, I don't think you can judge him by the win-loss no. record after that one year. Shazier, five tackles for loss, 20 tackles in the game. A little screen play, and nicely set up Roberts into the open. Roberts to the five, end zone, touchdown. That was well done by Indiana. A nice call by Kevin Wilson. They're a very good screen team. The offensive linemen do a good job of getting out. They show pass and look at the agility of that offensive line getting out, being able to seal, get downfield, and D'Angelo Roberts showing good finishing speed to get another touchdown for the Hoosiers. And again, if you're Indiana and you're Kevin Wilson, you're showing fight. You're showing you're, we're not quitting and we're going to get better. I think much different than last week up in Madison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what he wanted to see. And his defense hung in there today. I mean, they gave up a few big plays. But overall, a better performance, certainly, than they gave against the Badgers. The extra point for Ewald is up and good. So the Hoosiers have not just gone away in this one. Urban Meyer's team back on offense when we come back. Everybody needs to take lessons from the Oregon kicker. The onside kicks the Ducks had against Stanford. Yeah. The reason they made that game close, they were the best onside kicks I could remember seeing. That is just a pooch. And Smith will take a knee and then get popped. And I don't know if they're going to throw a flag. I think the, the special teams player, Justin Nowak, couldn't quite slow down. The way it all sets up, Urban Meyer and company are going to start to celebrate this win. They need to win, win impressively at Michigan next week. I think they hope they'll see the Spartans in the Big Ten championship game. They've clinched a berth in that game with this victory here tonight. They want as tough an opponent as possible. They will get Michigan State in that game. Win as impressively as they can. Try to turn a few voters and then be there in position if either Alabama or Florida State loses to be that team to get the shot in the championship. Well, just, just speculating, I think if they beat Michigan and they beat Michigan State in the Big Ten championship game, that must, might be enough to <laughs> overtake Baylor, who should jump them if Baylor beats Oklahoma State. Let's just get a playoff so we don't have to worry about all this. How's next that? year, next year, right. Chris. Well, we should also appreciate this. Ohio State, longest win streak in school history, their 23rd win in a row. They have clinched a spot in the Big Ten championship game in a couple weeks in Indianapolis. So they accomplish a lot as the final seconds tick off the clock. Buckeyes with the 42-14 victory. Well, an outstanding way to send out the seniors, Braxton Miller. Great day running the football, 144 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. And guess what? He just for extra threw 160 yards, two touchdowns. Well, the head coach was very happy a moment ago. Urban Meyer down on the field with Shannon Spade. So, Coach, we saw you celebrating with some of your guys. Obviously, the win streak continues. But you've said this week, this is about the seniors playing in this game on Senior Day. What is it like to share this moment with those guys? Well, you got to go back like you're cold. I'm a little cold, <laughs> yes, sir. Such a group. Just because you make four years don't make you a good senior class. It's what you do, what you stand for, and do you really care? And these guys care. This weekend, next weekend, obviously, I don't have to tell you, it's a big rivalry game. What is your message to the guys this oh, we're week? Sorry, we're going. It's uh, we, uh, we congratulate our opponent, and it's time to get ready for the rivalry game. This week, you mentioned focus. You, you spent a little too much time focusing on the national landscape. How did your guys respond to sort of the recalibration of that focus? Great, great. You saw the way they play. They came out and played what I was proud of. We played excellent defense. That's a team that scores a lot of points, leading the big second in the Big Ten in scoring and throwing, and they did a nice job. Thanks, Coach. So from Columbus, this one is over final score. Ohio State 42, Indiana 14. Be sure to tune in to ABC tonight, 8 Eastern, for Saturday Night Football presented by the new windows. Number four, Baylor taking on number two. And Oklahoma State for Chris Spielman and our crew Dave Fleming that's tonight on ABC for now we're going to head to the studio for our post game report. <laughs>